Hello, we're back. Uh, like I said, we had to split this stuff up because there's just no way we can go through all this at, all at one time. It's just too much material to cover in such a short period of time. Uh, this is the second part of it. And um, we were talking about China. Okay, so we went over this virus list. There's been quite a few viruses here. Something like eight or something, I believe. It's eight or twelve, I read out. Um, in any event, they've had a lot of viruses. Okay. Next thing we want to discuss is the epidemic. What is an epidemic? An epidemic is when you have a virus and that virus begins to spread uncontrollably. Okay. Um, when that happens, then basically from the virus, okay, uh, people either transmit it. Sometimes it can be in the air. Sometimes uh, it's not. Sometimes it can be transmitted through bodily fluids like HIV, for example. But um, for the most part, as we know, it usually is a respiratory thing and it, you know, people transmit it to each other. Um, I was talking about the contact tracing systems. And basically, in regards to that, um, we don't have one. We don't have a contact tracing system. So it's just spreading wildly here right now. Um, our borders are closed. Uh, who's to blame for this? You know, for this debacle. So let's get back to China for a second here. Got a few nice little lovely written things for you to hear. China's involvement in the pandemic is that President Xi did not create the virus, but his government is directly responsible for its global spread and its terrible consequences for people and, and different economies around the world. Xi's primary con concern was not lives at risk or containment of the virus, but rather the nation and his reputation's place in the global supply chain and his grip on power. When Trump disrupted his plans in a trade cold war, he allowed the international flights. This is what the Chinese people are telling me. I mean, this is not American thought. This is Chinese thought. Chinese people are, are telling me this from China. Okay. Anyways, um, whew. when Trump disrupted his plans in a trade cold war, he allowed the international flights to come in. Okay. And also, by contrast, democratic leaders are not afraid of exchanging information, and as a result, can result in the effect in the effectiveness of their efforts and can fine-tune and adjust and can respond to the flow of news in a way that optimizes life saving. What that means is basically we had no connections between these people, so we weren't communicating with them. So we weren't communicating with them. We didn't know what we were getting ready to get hit with. Okay? Not just them, but anywhere else on the planet. Also, the Chinese government is not accountable to its people and has never bothered to police the safety and cleanliness of food and food markets effectively, which the U.S. and other developed democracies started doing in a response to public and media pressure centuries ago. Centuries ago! So what does that mean? That means basically that they don't have that food being prepared properly in those wet markets. So when they don't do it correctly in the wet markets, what happens then? Well, if you don't have it refrigerated and you're killing these animals right there on the spot, this is what happens. You get, a, you get an epidemic out of it because somebody gets sick off of it. Who knows if it was even properly cooked to begin with, those bats. How do I know it's bats? It just seems to be, that seems to be where the data seems to be leading. Okay, we don't know for a fact. It just seems that the virus and the respiratory disease seems to be that way. Um, will we ever know with a proper investigation? No. How much would she shut down? He shut everything down. Even the doctor who was even complaining and crying wolf, he shut down. And later the guy strangely died, right? So, since Chinese policy ne makers never have to face their voters, which is why, for example, there's little lasting return or meaningful accountability after a scandal in 2008 in which tens of thousands of Chinese infants fell ill and required ho hospitalization after drinking contaminated milk. That was one of the ones that I had mentioned out of that long list. This is a long list of stuff that's been going on in that country the last 20 years. You don't hear about it because A, we don't care about it and B, 
uh, basically they put a lid on it so you don't really hear much about it. The World Health Organization keeps an eye on it. Should we shut down the World Health or Organization's funding? Eh, I don't know. Um, maybe less because they really botched this one up. But anyway, simply put, the Chinese government does not give a damn about its people and that's true. Now, I'm reading this off of Wall Street Journal articles, Wall Street Time articles. I'm not making any of this stuff up. This stuff is real. Okay, most people don't want to deal with the reality. They want to stick their head in the sand and pray it goes over. Then they deserve whatever happens to them. It's as simple as that. You know, if they become victim and pray to it, then they earned it. Because you need to be aware of what's going on in the world around you. You have to get past the obvious nonsense and then get down to the source. And that's what we do at Instar Alliance. We get down to the source for our clients. Our clients, that's why they're watching this right now, thousands we have, because of the simple fact they want to know the truth. And that's what we're here for, is to give them the truth so that they can make wise investment decisions. Does that make sense? Yes. So, anyway. Why does China consistently help North Korea? That's a good question. Communist parties take after their own. They have similar... Uh, policies, politics involved here. And that's why they keep keeping that country breathing, because, you know, they're communists. Okay, a good politician should always understand the mindset of an entity before they engage with them. Okay, now that's talking about uh, Donald Trump. I'll finish this article up with, if Ted Cruz had been president, he would have been a statesman, so not to cross the boundaries with that foreign leader. Trump has no political background, but he tends to use threats and bullying to achieve his goals. This type of reason created a perfect storm. Coupled with the impeachment from Pelosi, Pelosi sorry, and literally a reduction in the handling of the pandemic threats by a reduction in the funding caused this outbreak. So what that means basically is when it came, when the pandemic came, and again, I'm taking all this stuff and I'm combining it all together here. When the pandemic came, we weren't prepared for it. We weren't prepared for it in any shape or form. To be honest with you, I don't think anyone ever thought there would ever be a pandemic. But there is a pandemic. And people are wearing masks outside right now. If I go outside, I grab the camera, run outside right now, guess what? You'll find people wearing masks. Why? Because we're in a pandemic. Okay? So, anyways, that's all I have to say on that. I have a statement that would be directly, directly, directed, directly related to uh, Donald Trump, which is, if you can't beat them, join them. It's better to dance with your enemies than to fight with them. And that was a problem that we had here. He just didn't understand. I mean, he's all about winning the deal, the art of the deal. That's what uh, Donald Trump loves to do. He likes to do his art of the deal. I think we've got two Trumps that we're dealing with, by the way, here. We've got this Trump. Most more hardcore Trump here, I might add. And then we have this friendlier version of Trump. Okay? That version... That version's gone. Trust me on this. This version is gone. Okay. How are people feeling how he handled this? It's a debacle. It's a freaking debacle. And let's move on. Let's just move on here. Okay. Ooh, we're coming up hard on another 12 minutes. Okay. Um, in, in defense of Trump, we're going to go over his benefits that he had under the leadership. But, be, but before we do that, we've got to look at a few other things as well. We're coming hard up on another time frame again, uh, so I'm going to have to cut this one short. Tonight was going to be a part three. I warned you. I warned you that this is a lot of material to cover. We're busy right before the Democratic Convention tomorrow, aren't we? So I'm going to shut this one down, and then when you're ready, you can watch part three. Okay, I'll have it all marked on YouTube so that you'll know. And I'm jumping right into it without any much introduction. Because, you know, you want to keep going with this. Uh, I may have slowed down a little stutter to here and there, and I apologize for that. It's just that I'm not accustomed when I'm working these YouTube channel uh, training videos for the clients to have so much material to go over. But bear with me, and we'll get through this somehow. 
anyway. Talk to you in just a little.